Greetings, Pastor Chris with you again with another midweek Bible devotional. I hope you're doing well in the Lord today. Um, I'd hoped to get one done last week. Sorry I missed it, but um, well, our friend uh, COVID came along and uh, got a hold of me and then got a hold of Patty. No surprise <laughs> that we both got it. Um, luckily, it was more like a 24-hour bug, so it wasn't a, um, a real issue for us. Uh, we kind of get over pretty quick, so uh, kind of like herd immunity, I think we're all kind of like getting immune to it and it's really just nothing more than a bug these days a serious bug but a bug nonetheless anyway it's good to be back it's gonna be back uh, in in the word of god and and um looking forward to uh, getting back into the pulpit this sunday so um for this for this uh devotional we're gonna start off actually with a question for you how how's your prayer life how is your prayer life and i don't mean like you know are you praying you know getting up early and praying and that kind of thing i'm asking like How's the, the the content of your prayers? Is is it is it rich? Uh, is your time with God uh, steeped in worship and praise and adoration? Uh, in addition to to your your petitions that you lay at His feet, um, are, you, are you spending time worshiping Him in prayer? And um, I think you know a lot of times when we when we pray, we we probably go right to the petitions first, don't we? Um, it, it, because that's you know, we like to do that. <laughs> we trust God. So here, Lord, you can handle this stuff. I can't. You can help these people. I can't. You know, you, you can heal certain people. You can do whatever it is we need done. We can't do it. So, so that's really kind of where I think that comes from. Uh, but where's the um, the worship part of it? How how are you doing with that? And so um, I say that because we're going to take uh, our time today looking at just a, a few verses of a couple of psalms. And um, uh, you don't really have to go to them. Uh, if you want to, that's fine. But um, I I'll read them to you because it's only a handful of verses we're going to look at. But first, before we do that, I just want to remind everybody that the Psalms um, are often called like the great prayer book of the Bible. Uh, it it's loaded with prayers, primarily from David, but uh, from Asaph. There's, um, there's a bunch of different uh, writers in, in, in the Psalms, primarily David, though. But the in each of them, when you think about it, you go through all the Psalms, they all have elements of prayer in them. They have worship, they have praise, they have prophecy, they have lament, expressions of fear, anxiety. Uh, they, 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 they declare trust in the Lord, they declare faith in the Lord, uh, they, they declare his sovereignty. So, so throughout the Psalms, we see a tremendous um, opportunity uh, to, to extract out of them things for our prayer life ourselves. And there was um, a, a guy um, that I used to um, minister with when we were down in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, what he would do is he would take a psalm and he would kind of like change some of the, 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 the pronouns, so to speak, the wording of it. So you're turning it back to God and, and, and you're, you're, you're praying his words back to him. If there's ever a way to show the reverence of the Word of God, um, it's to do that. It's to take His Word and just pray it right back to Him. Uh, just give you, a, for instance, um, we're looking at. I'm going to look at Psalm 146 and just give you an example of this. Um, the beginning of the Psalm: you know, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Uh, do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord gives up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. And he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, o, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. That's Psalm 146. I'm in the NIV, by the way. Um, and of course, I didn't remind you to stop the video. Go get your Bible. So <laughs> hopefully you did that. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the NIV, I, I think um, it's a little more, I think a little more poetic uh, in, 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 in its phrasing. That, that's all. It's the only reason why I'm in it. Um, so so here, now here's an example of, of taking a psalm and turning it back to God, right? So Psalm 146, if you have it in front of you, and I just kind of follow along where I'm going, um, you, could pray, you could pray it this way. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise you all my life. I will sing praise to you as long as I live. 
I will not put my trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. Okay, we go through that. Blessed are those whose help is in you, whose hope is in you. You are the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You remain faithful forever. You uphold the cause of the oppressed and give food to the hungry. You set prisoners free. You give sight to the blind. You lift up those who are bowed down. You love the righteous. You watch over the foreigner and sustain the fatherless and the widow. And you frustrate the ways of the wicked. You reign forever for all generations. I praise you. So you see what I mean? If you take the psalm and you just, just change a few of the words, you've now taken God's word and you're praying it right back to him. So it really is a, a pretty cool thing to do. So that that's the wonder, that, that that's the beauty uh, of, of the book of Psalms. Um, so now what we're going to do um, is we're going to take a look at uh, there's, there's two psalms that have very similar phrases in them, and that's really where we're going to kind of park today. Um, I'm looking at Psalm 29, verses 1 and 2. Uh, you can go there if you want. And we're going to be also looking at Psalm 96, verses 7 and 8. But again, you don't, you don't have to try to flip back and forth. I'll just read it, and then we'll just talk our way through some of this. Now, um, the, the one from Psalm 96, that language also shows up in 1 Chronicles 16. Um, First Chronicles 16 is almost like um, um, uh, David's greatest hits, you know. <laughs> it's like he put a medley of a lot of his greatest hits from his psalms, and it gets compressed and, and merged together in uh, uh, First Chronicles 16. So we're just going to look at those two psalms, Psalm 29 and Psalm 96, but not the whole psalms, just a couple of verses. And, I, and we're going to park basically on a word uh, that, that's in them. So here we go. Psalm 29, beginning at verse 1. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Now in Psalm 96, beginning in verse 7. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. So the, the first thing that should stand out there is the first word, ascribe. Ascribe to the Lord. That's the, the phrase that's repeated through these four verses, right? Um, and they're structured very similar. Um, ascribe to the Lord in Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Psalm 96, ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. You look at both of those together. Ascribe to the Lord, everybody. <laughs> you heavenly be all the heavenly beings and the families of nations people on earth and the, the heavenly beings all all should ascribe to the lord now let's let's just take a quick look at this word ascribe what, what does that mean the, the, the hebrew um is the word yahab that, that that's i'm probably not pronouncing it right so any of my my hebrew scholars could correct me on that yahab's way i'm seeing it and what it means is to give to attribute to impute, you know, that we hear that phrase a lot, right? You know, imputation, right? For, where something is taken from one and given to another. Um, so so, so the, the, the sense, when you hear the word ascribe, you know, giving, attributing to, um, but almost it has a, like the connotation of, of a proclamation, of a declaration, of a great declaration for all to see and for all to hear, right? I'm going to proclaim, I'm going to declare, I, I'm going to ascribe these great things of God. I'm going to shout these things. I'm going to impute these things. So it's this, this giving that they, I, this, this is what belongs to God and you're declaring it. So that's really what, what, at least what I get out of, out of the concept of ascribing something to God. So again, we go back to, you know, ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord, you all you families of nations. Everybody should shout, shout this out for all to know, for all to hear, for all to see. And what is it that we ascribe? We ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. That shows up in both of those passages, right? Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Again, both Psalms have that. So we ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. We ascribe to him the, the glory do his name. We don't take any glory. No, no one else and nothing else takes that glory and outshines the glory of God. Only he does. So we declare that. And we declare it, of course, through word. And we can declare it through deed. We worship him. We surrender to him. We live our lives under him. So again, we, we, we ascribe we ascribe to the Lord the glory glory and strength, the glory do his name. 
And then they, they both end a little differently. The one in Psalm 29, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And then in Psalm 96, it says, bring an offering and come into his courts. So there's like the, 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 the action part of it, right? This is what we, the tangible thing we do. We ascribe, we give, we impute, we declare, right? Glory and strength, glory do his name. We worship him in the splendor of his holiness. We, we look, at, look upon his holiness as we see in scripture and we worship him. We think of Isaiah 6 that went into the throne room and saw what he saw and he fell and said, I'm ruined. <laughs> I'm ruined because even the hem of his garment, he said, filled the throne room. So he was just completely awestruck. Uh, so, so we see that, and of course we want to, the, the, the natural response should be to worship him, fall down and worship him. And that's what it says, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness, bring an offering and come into his courts. What's the offering? It's us. We give ourselves to him. We offer ourselves completely to him. We bring the sacrifice of praise is the way uh, uh, Paul put it. So, so, so that, that's the, the, the idea, right, of, of ascribing to the Lord. So, now, what does this mean in terms of our prayer life? Well, again, we, we, we can meditate on these things and we praise him and we worship him for his glory and his strength and his power and all that. But it's funny, I, I think our answer for us in the, in the New Testament time <laughs> is we look at Revelation, um, and you're going to know where I'm going to go with this, Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. These are great um, the visions that, that, that John saw um, Right after he delivered the seven letters, he was brought into, into heaven, and, and he said, these are things that must take place. So, first thing he sees in Roman in Romans, in Revelation 4, he's looking at these, these creatures flying around the throne, right? And he hears them saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is to, and is to come. Sounds a lot like Isaiah 6, the same you know, seraphim flying around. You go further down, you are worthy, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. So there's that ascribing thing going on, right? Uh, the same thing we saw in the Psalms. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Glory do his name. They're doing the same thing here. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It wasn't his doers to come. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And then in chapter 5, Revelation 5, we see this is the appearance of the Lamb of God now, um, who was slain. And what do we read there? there, there again, there, there, a new song comes out now. And what are they saying to the Lamb? You are worthy, you are worthy. <laughs> to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. A little, little further down, we read, worthy is the lamb who was slain to what? Receive, a scribe, imputing, right? To receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. There it is again. Right? There's that theme again. And then at the very end, it says, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. So here, here's what we do with this, right? We, we, we see these things. We hear these things. We read these things. What we need to do is not just read them. We need to, to, to meditate on them. We need to to, to let them sink into our hearts, let them soak into our hearts, because then when we go before God in prayer, we can pull these same words back up and we can ascribe them to him. We can praise him in our prayers, just like the, the, the angels in heaven are doing right now. We're worshiping the lamb. They're, they're, all power and glory and honor and praise and strength go to you, Lord. That could be literally how our prayers begin. You know, we, we open our prayers that way. You know, you think of the Lord's Prayer. It starts off with, you know, Jesus saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the first thing we're to do is address God and worship him. So what better way to worship him than to go into his word, take his word, and just pray it back to him and worship him with it. So so that's really the, the, the devotion for this week. Um, I, I was, I, I've always been taken by that phrase, uh, ascribe to the Lord, uh, these, these things. And... Um, 
I just did a little word study on it and come up with uh, the devotion for this week. So, so I hope this this is uh, again uh, something that can help you in your prayer life. And um, speaking of prayer, let's let's pray together right now. Um, Heavenly Father, we do <laughs> we do worship you. We ascribe all the, the the glory and honor that is due your name, which is all of it. There's nothing to be withheld from you. So we do worship you. We do praise you. Um, and and yes, all this is yours honor, power, wisdom, strength, all yours. So we, we take your word, Lord, and we pray it back to you because your word is perfect and you are perfect. So we do worship you and we pray, Lord, that you would, that this would settle into our hearts and that you would also lead us and remind us to take your words and just hand them right back to you and, 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 and worship and praise and honor to give you all the glory. And we pray this in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. So uh, I hope that was helpful for you and in your, your, your prayers. And just think about these things and, and um, maybe write a few notes down. And the next time you're in prayer, maybe you, it might come to your mind and, and you might do that. But and sometimes if you're stuck to, go look up a psalm and, and just like change the word, a couple of the words around and turn it right back to him. I think that'll be very helpful for you too. So again, um, it's always good to, to spend time in the word of God and I'm glad we were able to do it. As I always do, I remind folks that if you're in the Collinsville, Connecticut area uh, and, and don't have a home church, you're certainly invited to come visit us in Collinsville. We meet on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, at the same time, if, if you're online uh, watching this, of course you're online watching this, but if you're not able to come to our church, uh, but you'd like to see a little bit about what we're about, uh, we live stream our services on Sunday mornings, again, 10 a.m. Eastern time, depending where you are in the country or the world. We have people around the world watching these videos. Um, and uh, you can, uh, on, on our homepage is a link for our live stream. Just click on that and it'll bring you right in and then you can uh, worship with us, which would, be, which would be wonderful to have that happen. If you're able to come visit with us, wonderful to have you come visit with us. And of course, if you are in our church, then this is my weekly reminder to you that we will see you, God willing, at 10 o'clock Sunday morning where we can gather and worship together in this beautiful sanctuary that the Lord has given us. Uh, if you've seen this video and, and it's meant something to you, it's, it's touched you, it's helped you, encouraged you, then you know, please you know, give us a like and give us a subscribe. Uh, if you click on subscribe, what will happen there is you'll get notified the next time we post a devotional or when our live stream comes on. So, so like and subscribe. That also helps the YouTube algorithm kind of gets us in front of a few more folks. So I hope this is all helpful for you. And um, again, let, 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 your, let your prayer life really become enriched by using the word of God to fill it. <laughs> okay, so God bless you all. And until the next time we meet, be a blessing.